another edition of Active Living. Today we have a very special guest. We got Joe Johnson here. Joe is uh, the station, or not the station manager, but the studio, studio manager, manager here at ON TV. Mm -hmm. And he also has another life. <laughs> the other life that he has is he likes to travel around the United States. So, Joe, welcome to our show. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Well, I understand that you uh, you travel around the United States and you look for places where movies have actually been shot. Yeah, I guess you can call it a hobby. Um, of course, uh, when I go out to L.A., my favorite place to visit, there are lots of famous filming locations uh, in and around L.A., so that's kind of where it started. I, I go out and visit Hollywood multiple times. I lived out in that area for about a year back in 1990. Right. Um, but then as I started traveling to other cities uh, in the U.S., I would try to track down filming locations in other major cities, too. Right. How about uh, the Detroit area? We had uh, we had the movies here for a while, like Torino, for example. Grand did Torino, you, yeah. yeah. Did you ever um, um, did, did you visit those sites as well? Interesting thing that when you brought up Grand Torino is uh, I actually got to watch them film scenes from Grand Torino oh, and stood just across across the street from uh, Clint Eastwood as he did a scene at the barber shop in Royal Oak. Okay. So so yeah, I'll uh, I'll visit some locations here in the Detroit area That's too. That's great. Well, tell us about some of the some of the uh, the highlights of some of your trips. All right. Well, I have some photos here if we want well, to take great. a look at them. Uh, we'll start off with the legendary Bat Cave uh -oh. um, on the old 1966 Batman TV show. Uh, there was a repeated scene they would use on every episode of uh, Batman and Robin jumping into the Batmobile, right. saying "Atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed," <laughs> and then they would shoot out of the Bat Cave. Well, the Bat Cave is actually located in the Griffith Park area uh, in L.A., and it's not actually a cave. You, you look at these photos, you might think so, but right. as you get closer to it, you realize it's a tunnel. And if you were to walk through the tunnel and come out the other end, you would see the Hollywood sign. Oh, so really? it's uh, within viewing distance of the Hollywood sign. Um, and as you can see here, uh, there's a shot of the Batmobile zooming out of the Batcave. They would dress it up with some greenery and stuff like that to change it up a little bit. But uh, it's pretty neat that you can walk right up to it and get pictures with it. You know what's really interesting is I still watch Batman on oh, Saturday yeah. morning at at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> I still see him jumping in that car, which yeah, is great. <laughs> I love it. It's one of my all-time favorite TV shows. Oh, and, yeah, me uh, too. Yeah. Um, do you recognize this house? I don't. Uh, that uh, this home, which is a, a residential home that people live in, uh, this was used as exterior shots on the Brady Bunch TV show. Okay. Uh, so this was the Brady House, and it's kind of ironic. Um, in the in the TV show, if you remember, the kids lived upstairs on the second floor. They had their bedrooms right. and a bathroom where you never saw the toilet. And um, <laughs> so the set, the interior set, implied that it was a two-level home. Right. This house is not a two-level home. It's a single-level home. Right. So what they did is on uh, the side of the house, they hung a, a fake window on the side of the house to imply that it was a, a second level. But in reality, the floor plan of this house in no way matches the interiors that were used right. uh, on the set, right, and right. Uh, and so people have kind of picked up on that over the year, uh, over the years. Is that in L.A. as well? That's in L.A. Most okay. of these that I'll show you okay. are in L.A. Um, an interesting side note: back in 1990, I was uh, touring Paramount Studios with some friends, and the tour guide took us into a soundstage. And we were standing inside the Brady Bunch home. They had it set up for a show called The Brady's, which was sort of a semi-serious, okay. right. really short-lived uh, <laughs> series where they brought back the Brady cast. Right. And uh, so I got to be able to stand on the set as well as visit the home. So, Fantastic. Yeah, so wow. that's a lot of fun. All right. One of my all-time favorite movies is Back to the Future. Love oh, yeah, Back absolutely. to the Future. And so I visited several locations uh, from that movie. The first one here is a gymnasium uh, where they film the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. Okay. And um, you would never know it if you were walking past uh, the outside. It's a, it's a church, I believe it's a Baptist church, uh, maybe a United Methodist church, uh, right. Uh, right off of Highland Road, um, within viewing distance of Hollywood Boulevard. So if you're standing at Hollywood Boulevard in Highland, you'll see this church down the street. And I kind of walked in, this is uh, 2015. I saw some people going in uh, to this one building, so I kind of followed them in. 
and was standing inside the gymnasium where they filmed the uh, the scenes. And so I was afraid I was going to get kicked out. <laughs> And I saw a guy who was working there talking to some families and stuff. And then he approached me, and I thought, "Oh, here we go." Got, and he get booted out. Right? First thing he says is, "Are you a Back to the Future fan?" And I said, "Yeah, I am." And he said, "Well, let me give you a little tour." Oh, really? And so he showed me around and told me where they filmed certain scenes and oh, stuff. That's great. So that turned out to be really cool. Uh, another Back to the Future location is a is a historic home in uh, Pasadena. Uh, it's called the Gamble House. Uh, and of Procter and Gamble fame, okay. and it's a historic home that's open to public tours and stuff like that. And that home doubled as Doc Brown's home uh, in the past. In the 1955 Hill Valley uh, was Doc Brown's mansion where Marty goes to look him up. Uh, so that's that's a famous historic home. And right next to the home, what used to be a garage. Uh, where Doc Brown worked on his DeLorean time machine. Right. Uh, that is now a bookstore. And when I approached it and saw there was a bookstore, I was confused. And they said, well, we're closing up for the day. And when they closed their doors, as you can see in these photos, uh, it looks exactly like Just it like, did in the movie, the right. same doors and everything. And oh, yeah. So it's a really great photo opportunity if you're uh, able to visit Pasadena. Now, you're a car guy, too. Did you get to see the DeLorean? I have seen the DeLorean. Um, very recently, they did a major restoration on the original DeLorean. Oh, they they call it the okay. Hero Car. And uh, I think for the longest time, it was on the lot of Universal Studios just rotting in the oh, elements. No. So they did a major res restoration. It's now on display at the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles. Okay. And I just saw that uh, last, uh, last year, 2017. Okay. Now, this one might surprise you. This is the McFly home. And again, uh, this is just a residential house, and I almost feel bad for the homeowners because people stop by <laughs> all times of the day, every day of the week, and pose in front of their home. Uh, the street in front of the home was used for scenes where the DeLorean would f drive off or fly off at right. the end of the movie. Right. Um, and a lot of major scenes in the movie, uh, Biff towing the, uh, the car that he wrecked and everything, all took place right there in the driveway of this uh, home in the uh, Los Angeles area. So, wow. uh, and you could, you know, instantly you found it when you see those uh, electrical towers in the background. Oh, yeah. Because uh, those were featured pretty prominently okay. uh, in the film. Uh, so that's a big one if you're a, a Back to the Future fan is the McFly home. Another one is the mall. In the movie, it was known as the Twin Pines Mall. Uh, in reality, it's the Puente Hills Mall in the city of industry. So it's just outside of Los Angeles. Okay. And as, if you compare the, sh the shots side by side, you can see similar features and everything. And, uh, and so that's where um, the Libyans chase the DeLorean. Uh, in their VW bus, and they killed Doc Brown in the parking lot and everything. All of that was filmed there at this mall. Now, an interesting thing, I don't know if a lot of people have noticed this, but at the beginning of the movie, when, they're, uh, when Marty first arrives at the mall, the mall is called the Twin Pines Mall. Okay. But when he goes back in time and he's trying to escape from the farmer who breeds pine trees, he takes out one of the pine trees and at the end of the movie, when he returns to the mall, it's called Lone Pine Mall. Okay. So it got its name changed because of what Marty had done in the past. So, <laughs> so that's really neat to visit yeah. that uh, in person. Now let's go to a different part of the United States. Uh, fairly recently, I went to Boston, and one of the locations I uh -huh. had to visit was the Cheers Bar. Oh, absolutely. Um, now, they didn't film any of the scenes inside uh, this particular bar. Those were filmed, again, at Paramount Studios. I got to visit that set as okay. well. Um, so that was filmed uh, on a soundstage in Hollywood. The exteriors, though, was this, uh, this bar in Boston. And um, they've since changed their name to the Cheers Bar. It wasn't that originally. Um, but it's really cool to stand out in front of the bar. And, oh, yeah. uh, and you could go in and grab a bite to eat. And they got pictures of the cast and everything inside Very there. Cool. So pretty yeah. neat to see that. I was a big fan of the show. All right. So when the holidays uh -huh. roll around, um, <laughs> a lot of scenes from the classic movie A Christmas Story right. uh, was filmed in Cleveland, Ohio. Love that lamp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so the home, the uh, the home that's featured in the Christmas story, that's in uh, Cleveland. And there was a guy who was a big fan of the movie. He made a fortune selling leg lamps, 
And one day he found out that the house was up for sale, so he bought it. Oh, really? And he had it restored um, to look exactly like it did in the movie. And he went the extra step. He remodeled the interior to resemble the movie, even though none of the scenes were filmed inside the home. Okay. Again, that was on a soundstage. Right, right. Um, but you can actually visit the home, go inside the house. It looks exactly like it did uh, in the movie. All period... Uh, Things in the kitchen like soap and dishwashing right, right, detergent, right. all that stuff is all period for the film. The leg lamp is in the so window. So that was kind of a tourist. Uh, it's a touristy thing that yeah. you can stop and visit. Oh, yeah. Cool. And Pretty then cool. there, if you go to downtown Cleveland, there's some other locations you can visit that were seen in the movie. Um, Higby's department store where the kids oh, yeah. have their face pressed up against the glass. Um, you can go do the same thing. <laughs> and around the holidays, they have a Christmas story playing on a big screen TV right, in the right, window. Right. So. Um, so that's a fun one to visit. And just across the street from the house, the, uh, they also purchased some additional homes that are now museums and gift shops and things like that. So, wow. Yeah. So you get around. <laughs> I do, I do. I try to uh, look up these low. As a matter of fact, the, the Cleveland trip, we went specifically to see the Christmas Story House. Okay. So it, it's become a tourist attraction. Right, so, yeah. right. Uh, another movie series that I'm a huge fan of are the Fast and Furious movies. Oh, yeah. Um, and so one of the locations that I visited in uh, 2015 um, is the Toretto home, the Toretto house, where a lot of scenes take place there. They have their dinners with all their family members right, and everything right. like that. And uh, spoiler alert, in um, the, uh, one of the more recent Fast and Furious movies, uh, the bad guy blew up the house. And so uh -oh. it was, it was kind of funny... <laughs> To see the movie, uh, I think it was Fast and Furious 7, I think it was. Um, and then I went to the house, and I was relieved that it was still standing. It's still there. Because I had just <laughs> seen it get blown up in the movie. So, um, But it's pretty neat. You can go up, get some pictures uh, right in front of it. And when I arrived, there were multiple fans of the film that were all taking pictures and That's stuff. Fantastic. So uh, we're all like-minded. Uh, sticking with Fast and Furious, um, just recently in 2017... Uh, I found this restaurant uh, in Malibu off of Pacific Coast Highway. It's called Neptune's Net. And uh, they shot a pretty prominent scene uh, from the very first Fast and the Furious movie there. And you can see I do side-by-side uh, -side comparisons here with my photos. Oh, yeah. So I insisted on sitting at the exact same table that Paul Walker and Vin Diesel sat at as they had their conversation. I love it. Yeah, and so it's a great. beautiful area. I love that area of Malibu. Oh, Malibu is great. Yep. Here's another city. This is uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, I went there for a conference uh, in 2017. And uh, Prince, uh, the performer, oh, is yeah. from uh, Minneapolis. Right. And he filmed a lot of Purple Rain in Minneapolis. And featured prominently in the film is this uh, venue, this concert venue called First Avenue, where he used to perform as a performer. And then he decided to shoot scenes for his movie there. Right. And I remember I was staying at a hotel and I came, I walked outside and there was a guy parking cars and stuff. And I said, do you know where First Avenue is? Is it in a bad neighborhood? Can I visit it? And he pointed down the street and he said, it's right there at the end of the street. And I had no <laughs> idea. So I walked down so the street, close, right? visited First Avenue. They let me come in, even though they were getting ready for an event, they let me come in and see the stage where Prince oh, performed. Fantastic. And that was a big deal for me. Oh, yeah. As you know, we lost Prince a few years ago. Right. So. Uh, it was kind of a holy place to, to visit, um, the place where Prince performed. Right, right. So, And you never got to a studio, though. <clears throat> now I want to go to Paisley Park. Unfortunately, the hotel that I was staying at was about an hour away from okay. Paisley Park, so I'll have to get back to that eventually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this next location is uh, on the Warner Brothers lot, and I really recommend when you go to L.A. to visit the movie studios. Right. There's so much to see and do at the movie studios. I've done one, in a, in a, it was many years ago, mm -hmm. but it was just after the shark, you know, the... Uh, Jaws. Jaws was, was yeah. done. And they took us out in a little boat in this little little pond area. Yeah. They said, this is where the boat scenes were filmed. Yep. And this pond was about, I don't know, it couldn't have been any more than five or five acres of... And yep. you could, you know, all of the, and and all of a sudden, Jaws comes up out. That of the water. was Universal Studios. Yeah, that, that was, had to have been Universal. Yeah, we yeah. Did. that was great. That was a great tour. Yeah, I really love visiting the studios and seeing locations. And over at Warner Brothers, um, Friends, the TV show Friends, was such a big hit that when it went off the air, Warner Brothers wanted to preserve the main set, which is Central Perk. 
So as you can see here, this is the interior of Central Park. And when you tour the studio, that's one of the highlights of the tour is being able to visit the, the bar, the club that, right. uh, that the friends visited. And this is kind of a neat thing. Um, I was allowed to sit on the actual sofa where the friends sat. Yay. Yeah, so <laughs> now my sisters visited probably a year before I did, and they were told they weren't allowed to touch the sofa, so uh -huh. I must have used my magic to uh, to get <laughs> on the sofa. But uh, to be personality, able to... Joe. So exactly. <laughs> I could talk my way into anything. So so it's pretty neat to be able to sit on the friend's couch. They, they claim that that's the actual sofa that was used on the TV show. So... Now, this is in New York City, and as you can imagine, there are a lot of locations you can visit in New York City. So many movies are filmed there. But one that jumps out to me is the, uh, the abandoned fire station at the time that was used as Ghostbusters headquarters. Oh, yeah. And now it's known as uh, Hook and Ladder 8, and I believe it's occupied and used. And the firefighters there take pride in the fact they, they have like a Ghostbusters sign that they hang up. Uh, and there's some chalk on the sidewalk that says Ghostbusters headquarters. Um, so as you walk downtown, uh, you know, Manhattan, uh, right. you can visit the Ghostbusters headquarters. Well, that's kind of That's cool. kind of neat, yeah. yeah. And there's so many other locations to visit in New York. I mean, if you go to the Empire State Building, you can name all the movies that were filmed there. Oh, yeah, there. a ton of them. I was just watching uh, Sleepless in Seattle last night, and uh, they had some scenes that were set at uh, the Empire State really? Building. So, yeah. Uh, back to Malibu, uh, there's a beach off of Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, it's called the Leo Carrillo State Park. And um, I went there in 2015 and discovered that there were several movies that were filmed at this beach. Uh, one of them is the opening sequences in the movie Grease. Uh -huh. um, prior to the opening credits, they show Sandy and Danny roaming, you know, roaming around on this beach and saying their goodbyes because summer is coming to an end. And as you can see on the left side of the screen are images from the film. On the right side of the screen are pictures that I took. And if you line them up, you can see that they match up pretty yeah, much sure exactly. Right. So uh, it's really neat to stand in the spots where these actors stood. That's great. So here's another location from the movie Grease, which was a big deal when I was a kid. It, it came out in 76 or 70, somewhere around there. And I, you know, I'm 10 years old at right. the time, and I, I just love this movie. So some of the scenes for Grease uh, were filmed at Venice High School. And as luck would have it, I pulled up to Venice High School uh, when it was closed, and I found that a gate leading to the football field had a chain and a lock on it, but the lock was not locked. Oh, and so I was able to walk right on <laughs> the field. And um, where Danny sings uh, Summer Loving, those were uh, filmed right there on the bleachers and as Danny ran track. Um, it's amazing to me that the track that you see there is still a dirt track. Just really? as it was 40 years ago, oh. it looks exactly the same as it did in the movie. Yeah. It's kind of crazy that the, the field has changed that little in 40 yeah, years. I think they would use that, you know, that, that new covering they yeah. use. You know. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so it's amazing to stand there and, and see that it looks exactly the same as it did. Uh, another scene from Greece, um, the L.A. River, uh, it's, it's such an unusual river. It's basically all concrete with right. the water running down the middle of it. Um, but many, many movies have filmed uh, at the L.A. River, including this famous uh, car race from the movie Greece. Um, and so it was really neat to see that in person, and I brought my little Greece car with yeah, me. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> um, so that was neat to see and visit. Um, the Griffith Observatory, again, many, many films uh, have scenes shot at the Griffith Observatory. Uh, the Rocketeer, uh, even La La Land, which came out in 2016, right. had some scenes at the Griffith Observatory. And Rebel Without a Cause, um, there's some pretty famous scenes with James Dean getting into a knife fight um, at this uh, telescope part of Griffith Observatory. Today you go there, you get a magnificent view of the L.A. skyline. Right. And you could stand in the exact same spot where uh, yeah. James Dean stood. So that's that's pretty neat. I really recommend visiting the observatory. Um, it's it's a really uh, iconic landmark in Hollywood. 
Uh, this house, most people might not recognize at first glance, but um, this is the Happy Days home oh. uh, where the Cunninghams lived and uh, Fonzie lived above the garage. Um, again, it's just a residential home, and you could stand right in front of it and, and visit it. And people still live there, I assume. Yep, yep, exactly. Now, this is a little bit of a cheat, even though this was, this was a lot of fun to visit. Um, th these pictures were taken in Jamestown, New York. Uh, at the I Love Lucy Museum. Okay. There's actually two museums in Jamestown. Uh, there's a Lucille Ball Museum and I Love Lucy Museum. Uh, Jamestown, New York was Lucille Ball's uh, childhood home. Mm -hmm. And so you could visit the house she grew up right. in. And when you enter one of the museums, they have recreations of the I Love Lucy set that you can walk on okay. and, and visit. Great. So in these photos, you have the living room, the kitchen, um, and in the bottom right photo is their Hollywood Hotel. There's, um, there are several episodes where the Ricardos and the Mertzes went to L.A. Okay, yeah. uh, Ricky had gotten a part in a movie or something, right, and right. they stayed in this hotel. So you were able to visit the hotel where they stayed. So I'm a huge I Love Lucy fan, and so that was kind of a big deal to, to look at these sets and uh, see them in person. Oh, yeah. These are great. So, yeah. Uh, this is that same beach I told you about earlier, the Leo Carrillo State Park. Um, scenes from the Karate Kid were filmed there. And um, I looked for the landmark in the back. There's kind of a cliff there right. I, in the back, and I tried to find the same angles, the same yeah. perspective yeah. Uh, where the cliff was. And so you can see that you can mimic uh, yeah, Mr. Great. Miyagi and uh, <laughs> daniel San uh, doing yeah, the Karate doing Kid stuff. Yeah. Right. So that was fun. Uh, one of my favorite uh, film noir uh, movies is uh, L.A. Confidential, and there's a pretty iconic scene in L.A. Confidential uh, that was filmed inside a restaurant in Los Angeles called the Formosa. Okay. Uh, right now the Formosa is closed. It's undergoing some renovation. Hopefully it'll reopen soon. But I was able to visit in uh, 2000, let's see, I think that was 2015, and you can see how things really haven't changed that much um, on the right are scenes from the movie on the left right. are photos that I took. They got the celebrity photos going all the way around the top above the bar. Oh, yeah. And I sat in the same booth that where uh, they had a scene where two of the, the uh, police officers uh, confront uh, what they think is a prostitute uh, made to look like Lana Turner. Okay. And in the movie, it turns out she really is Lana Turner. And it's a <laughs> pretty pretty neat scene. But yeah. um, to be able to sit in the same booth is pretty pretty awesome. Oh, that's nice. Um, and then this, this is our final uh, picture here. Um, I'm a big fan of the, the, oh no, I don't think this is our final picture, but um, I'm a big fan of the movie La La Land. And um, I was uh, waiting to uh, go see the Conan O'Brien show at the Warner Brothers studio. And uh, right outside of the, of the Warner Brothers studio is a restaurant called The Smokehouse. And so a buddy of mine went in to grab a bite to eat, and uh, it was featured in La La Land, where right. the character Sebastian plays the piano and gets fired right. uh, on Christmas, and it's where him and Mia meet for the first time. And it's virtually unchanged. The only difference is there's no piano there right now, um, but it's a pretty neat uh, location to visit. Um, that's in Burbank, California. Um, all right, this is a uh, hotel uh, on Las Palmas Avenue, right off of Hollywood Boulevard, and several different things have been filmed there, but uh, probably the most famous use uh, was in the movie Pretty Woman. Oh, yeah. Uh, Julia Roberts, uh, when she was the prostitute, was staying in this hotel, and at the end of the movie, when she goes back to the hotel, Richard Gere shows up in his uh, limousine and climbs the balcony and rescues her from <laughs> uh, this life. So uh, right. if you're a fan of Pretty Woman, that's a neat location to visit. And you could also go into Beverly Hills and visit the hotel that's in Beverly Hills that's featured in the movie as well. That was a great movie. Now let's go way back. Um, Laurel and Hardy, they had an Oscar-winning uh, film called uh, The Music Box. And a big uh, part of the movie is them trying to deliver this piano in this crate up a huge flight of steps. And those steps still exist today. <laughs> it's a little bit more developed. There's a lot more uh, homes and stuff on either side of the steps. But as you can see, I was able to do a split screen with me on the left 
and Laurel and Hardy on the right. Um, that's how unchanged the uh, steps are in what a hundred years or something it's how in the world do you find these places joe a lot of them you can find on google <laughs> really? um if you go on google and, and look up film locations they'll give you uh addresses and and things to look for sometimes you have to do a little detective work i'm going to show you a photo in a moment where i had to do some detective work um but i'm a big fan of Lauren hardy oh everybody is now there's another set of steps i'll, I'll show you in a little bit um Let's go back to Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, the, the TV show Mary Tyler Moore Show right. uh, was um, set in Minneapolis, even though, again, they filmed in, in Hollywood. But in the opening of uh, the Mary Tyler Moore Show, there are some shots of Mary Tyler Moore uh, living her life in Minneapolis. And so I was able to find some of the locations that were featured uh, in the opening of Mary Tyler Moore Show, including this escalator. Right. And as you can see, um, when I place them side by side, they're almost identical. Right. It's kind of eerie um, to be able to stand right where Mary Tyler Moore stood. Um, this is an indoor plaza in downtown Minneapolis um, that you're able to find. And uh, it was really neat to recreate that photo yeah. i just wish i had some flowers i could have held yeah them. well you're a little well she's she's probably a little better looking <laughs> that's <now>. right that's <laughs> right and then of course this is pretty iconic the scene where she throws her beret in the air oh, yeah. um, was filmed at this intersection unfortunately when i was there um that intersection was undergoing some major restoration so i had to get the the best photo i could in that situation i love um, the shot though <laughs> yeah, and um, they have since erected a statue of Mary Tyler Moore. She was there for the dedication when they uh, put the, the, uh, the statue up. Uh, unfortunately, they had to move the statue to do the renovations, but normally when you visit downtown Minneapolis, there'll be a statue marking the actual location where she threw her beret in the air. Pretty so, cool. Yeah. Um, you know, earlier I mentioned uh, visiting uh, movie studios. Paramount Stu Studios is one of my favorites. And uh, if you stand outside this famous gate, um, that's this used to be the main gate of Paramount Studios. Right. And it's featured in many, many movies, including um, uh, Sunset Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's William Holden in the picture on the right uh, entering the gates of Paramount Studios. And there's a famous scene where uh, they're driving this car through the gate. And um, so lots of history at Paramount Studios. It's my favorite studio to visit. Uh, again, this is in Minneapolis. This is the house that was featured in Purple Rain, where Prince's character lived with his uh, parents. Um, okay. cool. I found out that Prince had purchased this home uh, just before he died, um, so it's owned by the the estate, Prince's estate. Right. Cool. Um, Philadelphia. Uh, there's a uh, museum the of uh, there's an art museum in Philadelphia. And it's the famous steps where Rocky uh, runs up the steps in several of his films, uh, most notably in the first one. Uh, so I just couldn't resist. I wore <laughs> the same gray sweats, That's a great. black knit hat, Converse sneakers, and uh, just shot pictures of me running up the steps. I went early in the morning. This is about 7 o'clock in the morning uh, when I took these pictures thinking I would be alone on the steps. Uh, to my surprise, I found a bunch of women doing yoga on the steps, so I had to... <laughs> carefully uh do my thing around these women doing yoga on the steps but we're getting short on time joe we got okay. about one minute left oh wow that went, so by, that went by really fast all You're right fun doesn't it <laughs> yeah yeah definitely i love talking about this stuff okay so all right well listen i want to thank you very much for bringing uh, all of these pictures these wonderful times back to uh to so we can actually view them here on ontv oh it's something and, i uh, love talking about and sharing i want to thank you so much for uh, coming today thank my you. pleasure thanks for having me all right bye now